So today we are taking a first look at the brand new plug and play VFD spindle from Fox Alien. And just to put that into perspective, it is about twice as powerful as your average trim router. So it is quite an upgrade. We're going to take a little bit of a look at the hardware itself, show you just how easy it is to get everything set up. And on top of that, I scored an exclusive discount code from Fox Alien for you, the viewers. So the code on screen and the links in the description area will save you 10% if you are interested. Now, let me just explain why I'm so excited to get this in. I previously did a three part series about installing and setting up a generic branded VFD spindle. And it was honestly a nightmare. It took me weeks to figure everything out and to get everything working how it should have been. So to have something in that is plug and play really makes me happy. So let's take a closer look at this now. So this is what you get within the kit. The air-cooled 1.5 kilowatt spindle fitted with an ER11 collet. The VFD unit in order to run that with the control panel on the front. We have a couple of cables. One is the main power cable to run it all. The other two is the cable to connect the VFD to the spindle, and this is quite long, so should fit larger machines, plus the PWM cable, should you want to run it from your CNC machine directly. There is also the instruction manual, and I would stress, do take a look at this before doing anything. There are a couple of notes in here, or specific warnings about settings that need to be correct on your machine before starting to avoid things like burnout. So definitely read that before you begin. But generally speaking, a very easy and simple setup. Now, price is obviously an important factor, and this has hit their website at just under $500 or just under £400. Obviously, a little bit more off if you use the discount code. Now, is that value for money? Well, from my perspective, as I said earlier, I spent weeks trying to figure out a generic, unbranded, cheaper VFD and spindle setup. If I put a monetary value against every hour I spent trying to sort that out, I can guarantee you it would have cost more than buying this outright. So no, it's not necessarily cheap, but is it value for money? Well, when you think that you can be up and running with this in under 10 minutes because of the seamless setup, that is where the value comes in for me. Now I am not naive, there is a very good chance that this is just a repackaged generic VFD and spindle setup, probably very similar to the one I originally brought for around half of the cost. But what is the difference? Will they have done all the hard work for you? I had to buy additional cabling, additional connectors, circuit boards to make the PWM system work, and obviously on top of that, figure it all out myself. They have done the hard work for you, even down to locking the settings down on the control board so that you're not going to make any mistakes. They've really kept this process as simple as possible, and that is ultimately, as I just said, where the value comes into this purchase. Especially if you lack confidence around wiring an electrical setup, as I say, it's just plug and play, so it is making life as easy as possible. And in terms of controlling the speed of the spindle from the VFD, well, you get two options. You can either use the knob on the front of the box in order to control that, turn it up or down accordingly, or you can use your PWM connection on your machine in order to run it from your software or your laser port, I should say. Now that gives you two options for manual control or automatic control. They really have done everything they can to keep this as simple as possible, making it very basic and easy to install and set up. Today I'm going to be installing the spindle on the Fox Alien XE Pro. Now the diameter of the spindle is 65 millimeters, which is a direct replacement for the Makita I have in place at the moment. Now Fox Alien do advertise this will work with most of their machines. It is worth highlighting this unit is just over two and a half kilograms, so it does have a bit of weight to it. And just be conscious of it pulling your Z axis forward. This setup is perfectly fine to handle it, the XE Pro, especially with the linear rails. So the first thing I need to do is take off the dust shoe, take out the router and get this ready to install. So with the router now removed, we can simply drop the spindle in place. You want to lower it down into the holder enough so that it's got a good grip, but not too deep that you're ultimately losing your Z height. Also, if you've got a dust shoe, you want to make sure you've left enough room at the bottom to allow for this to attach. So I'm going to place mine about there. I'll just start pinching this back up. 
Now you don't want to over tighten the bolts, but equally you don't want the spindle slipping either. A little trick that I like to do is taking a Sharpie and just putting a little mark on the side so I know exactly where the spindle was sitting in terms of the height. And if that black line then disappears later, I know the spindle has moved. Next, we can move on and take a look at the wiring. Now when you come to connect it up, you'll want the longest cable in the pack with two aviation connectors on either end. These are different size connectors. I did notice one is four wires, one is three wires. I can't help but think the earth hasn't been followed through. I'll put that question to Fox Alien and if I get an answer before the video goes live, I'll let you know. We're gonna take the largest connector from the wire and place it in. There is an alignment pin, so it will only go in one way. Once that is in, push it in tight and then thread the connector on to make sure it is sitting tight and snug. Now at this point, you'll want to run the cable through the drag chain, but give yourself a good 12 inches or so of slack in order for this to move up and down. And when ready, just unclip your drag chain and feed it all through. Now this cable is typically thicker than most of the cables in there. If you are struggling to get it into your drag chain, you could always use something like Velcro ties just to tape it to the outside of the drag chain itself. Take the other end of the cable and connect it to the 1.5 kilowatt spindle port. Again, push that in, tighten it up. If you are using the PWM port, you can connect this as well at the same time. We'll put that in place, align that pin up, and again, connect that. I will point out this cable is around two foot long, so this does need to be fairly close to your main unit. And also while you're here, you can connect the power cable as well. If you are using the PWM control, connect the other end to the laser port and make sure the switch is set to laser mode. So I'm about to turn the power onto this for the first time. Now this can technically run without the CNC machine needing to be on, so I'm just going to test that everything is working via the manual controls. Couple of things to point out, obviously make sure your switch is set to knob control in order to do this. The other thing is even though this does have a run and stop button, these are actually disabled. This doesn't start or stop your spindle. This can only be done by the control knob on the side. So turn it all the way down will mean that it's in the off position and it shouldn't be running. So we're gonna turn the power on at the wall. We're gonna turn the power on to the unit. Give this a second to fire up. Well, hopefully not fire up but turn on. So you may just be able to see that it shows zero, zero, zero. That's on knob control, we're good to go. If I start to turn this off, the spindle should turn on. Excellent, it is running and working. Let's turn it up a little bit more. That is really nice and quiet. So now I know that everything's working, I'm gonna turn this all back off and make sure it's working with the PWM port on the CNC machine. Now within your control software, there are a couple of things we need to do to make sure everything's going to work correctly. So we're going to connect to the machine to begin with. I'm doing this in GSender, but you can do it in Open Build Controller, UGS, or even Candle. With the machine connected, I'm just going to unlock it we're then going to come down to the console area. You'll have one of these areas within your control software. And we just need to change a couple of the settings. First, we're going to change the $30 setting, which is for the spindle speed, and make sure this is set to the same parameters as the spindle, which is 24,000. To do this, we type dollar three zero equals two four zero zero zero, hit enter, and it's input that command. Next, we need to make sure it is in spindle mode and not laser mode, even though we selected laser on the back of the control unit. To do this, we're going to type $32 equals zero. Hit enter, and we'll just confirm those settings by typing dollar dollar again, hitting enter, and it brings up our refresh settings. If we scroll up, we can see that the $30 is set to 24,000, and we can also see $32 is set to zero. Now at this stage, you'll want to make sure that the control knob is set to PWM to run from the PWM control. The CNC control has already been turned on, so we're now going to power up the VFD. Give that a second to load up. And once that has finished, we're going to type in a simple command just to run the spindle at a low speed. We are going to type in M3 space S2000. And we're going to hit enter and this should start the spindle. 
Excellent, it is running as we expected. We'll now type M5 to stop this. Next I want to verify the speeds of the spindle versus the speeds we're putting into the software. Now this is a fairly cheap tachometer and basically how it works is there's a slight reflective pad that I've put on here and it will just send a little laser to that and every time it catches it, it will count how many times it revolves. Now as I say, this is quite a cheap device so I'm not expecting it to be perfect but it will give us a good indication of how accurate the RPMs of the spindle are versus the RPM settings that we're putting into the software. So the inputs versus outputs were as follows. 2000 actually came out at 2600 RPM, 5000 came out at 5900, 10000 came out at 11500, 15000 came out at 16800, 20,000 came out at 22,000 and 24,000 effectively the top speed was actually 24,000. So other than the very top end of the RPM range, generally speaking this is running over the settings we're putting into the software. So for example, 2000 RPM was actually closer to 3000 RPM. So what this means is if you are inputting soft settings into your software, you may want to dial them down slightly. For example, 12,000 RPM actually on the spindle is probably more like 11,000 RPM in your software. So with everything set up and installed, well, what was the next step to do? I could have taken it really gentle and done some testing, but instead I threw it straight in with a 26 millimeter single cut 3D carving. Yes, that is correct. I went straight in at 26 millimeters deep in one single pass to do this chain style carving and it handled it just fine. This was running for around three and a half to four hours and again, everything went smooth. The spindle stayed cool. So very happy with the testing straight off. So after installing and testing, I can confidently say this is one of, if not the easiest spindle and VFD setup out there in order to upgrade your CNC machine. My initial impressions could not be any higher for this. Now obviously I've got to do some extended testing, which I will be feeding back on in the future. But honestly, if anyone is looking to do this and has always been worried about a VFD spindle upgrade, this will put your mind at ease. If you are thinking of purchasing one, there will be some links down in the description area that will always take you to the best available price. And if you have any questions, obviously let me know in the comments section. I will do my best to answer. Thank you all very much for watching and final thanks goes to my patrons. I will see you all on the next episode.